Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Let's Play Chrono Trigger! Today, we're going to be going back to the Dimensional Vortex in the present time period now. So yeah, new dungeon. It's, I mean, it's similar to in the format of the previous one, but well, there's a lot of new treasure, new bosses and everything, so let's go check it out. Uh, just a fair warning, viewers, there is going to be Chrono Cross spoilers in this episode, either from the dungeon or from what I'm going to say, so just a fair warning. Let's, let's take a look at the setup here. Uh, Chrono and Frog are pretty much the same as before, but I gave all the new equipment that I got to Ayla there, because well, I'm going to be using her for a little while, so let's take a look around, see what random floors I get here this time. Nuts. Well, yeah, just like uh, the first time we went through this area, you... Well, actually, the first time I did want to uh, touch all those things, but this time I don't, because I just want to avoid all the enemies here. Hopefully, I will be able to get the new floor, the new unique random floor. Oh, well, there it is. That was easy. Not that there's anything really special about this particular floor. But it's there. I just figured I'd want to show you what's new in here. Yeah, you don't need to use fire on these guys. They're the same. They're the same ones from uh, from the lost tank in there. So you just go behind the waterfall, kill some enemies there, and you move on up. Yeah, there's no treasure in this one, unlike the last unique room, but well, still, it's there. Nice to have. Huh. That's weird. I didn't get into any battles there. Huh. That's weird. I wonder why that was. Maybe I just got lucky. Oh. This again. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to need the golden stud on Chrono here because he's going to be spamming Luminaire a lot. And I'll just meet you on the other side. Okay. Made it out of there. Just fought a whole bunch of battles. Use Luminaire every battle. That's pretty much all you got to do. Well, let's see if I can show you how to knock these guys out correctly. So wait for him to turn his back? Nuts. Okay, let's try that one again. Okay, wait for it. Nuts. Ah, oh, I can't open that. Damn it. I would not be very good at Metal Gear Salad, would I, viewers? Oh, well. I wonder what happens if I have someone other than Chrono in the lead for this part. Well, at least I got one for three. It's pretty good in baseball. Okay, so we got through the first part. Uh, exit is to the left. And save point to the right, where I want to use a shelter. Get everyone, or, well, particularly Chrono, back up to fall there. And now I want to go back to the dragons tier. That ought to be good enough. Now we got new dungeons. I don't think there's new music here, though. Yeah, no new music this time around. Oh, well. But I like this tune. It's fun. Hmm, what's that thing on the right there? Well, remember that for later, viewers. We can't get there right now. Let's see if I can get past the rats. Nuts. I need to give them nuts. No. But anyway, you can kind of see there's a ladder there going down into the lava. But, well, obviously we can't go into the lava. That would be bad. If only there were a way we could get past the lava there. Let's see. Let's go over here. Haha! Treasure! We get useless junk and the master's crown. That's actually a pretty interesting piece of headgear. What it does is it gives you, well, yeah, it's basically like a prism specs and the prismatic helm in one. It is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, it shares the same slot as the, uh, what is it? As the haste helm. So I can't just get rid of, or I can't just get rid of that. So the master's crown, not so useful for me. And this guy, just like the one back at the last area, he has a lot of HP. So just use drop down. You can probably one shot him. I think he has exactly 3,500 HP. I barely had enough of that one. And I'm at max strength too. 
Let's see, you want to go through a secret passage to get a strength capsule. And let's see, there's another one. Where is it? Ah, you go down there. Ha ha! Back in the Lost Sanctum. And there we get the Dream Reaper. Dream Weaver? No. No. But uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing as the Suzaku for Magus. But I don't think I want to use that on him. I suppose I could bring him in with that and give him the Dragon's Tear. That may not be a bad idea. I'm not going to do that today, but I could. Some, maybe in the next one. Anyway, here we got a couple new enemies. So first thing, they're fire. You want to use water on them. I think the name is just Fireball. I just went through it too quickly there. But yeah, what you want to do is yeah, use water on them. Once you kill them, I think they have a hundred, a thousand HP. They explode, and that's it. I do like how they at least created some new uh, enemy sprites in the DS version. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of palette swaps and all that, but at least they have something. So. Let's see, I thought there's some a chest down there. Well, there's a cave down there, but I can't get down to that. Hmm. If only there were a way I could get down to that cave there, but sadly, there is no such way. I don't think. Is there a ladder here? I could have sworn there was a ladder around here. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Whatever. Uh-oh. How are these guys dropping in from the ceiling like that? How does it even work? Kill those guys and go through a secret passage to get the Spell Slinger. It's a gun for Luca there. But I think it's basically like the Crisis Arm, I would think. But it doesn't have the speed boost, so and she's never really going to attack anyway. So I don't think that's really that good. Not to mention, guns are based on based their damage on the hit stat, and there's no way to max that out, like with a capsule or something. So yeah, it's kind of pointless. If if I wanted to do something like that, I'd use the crisis arm or another weapon for Robo that we'll get soon enough, viewers, soon enough. Not in this dungeon, though. But anyway, you climb up here, another strength capsule that I will never use. Well, I suppose I could use them on Luca and Marley. Not that strength would ever do anything for them, I don't think. I don't think strength is used in any of their damage calculations. Well, whatever. Can I ever have enough elixirs? Awesome. So anyway, once you get all the way around here, we're right back on the first map there. You can see we've completed the stuff to the left there. I don't want to hit the switch. Yes. Yeah, you have to hit the switch. And what that does is it drains all the lava here, including in the next area. So that'll be useful. Maybe they're not, like, hanging on the ceiling. Maybe there's just a hole in the ceiling and they're dropping down from above somehow like that. Okay, we don't need to fight these losers anymore. So anyway, if you go around here, walk to get around that guy, and... Oh. Oh, right! Okay, yeah. They, it drained the lava to the left there. I need to go around that way. Yeah, I was thinking about this ladder earlier and I forgot. Whoops. But anyway, you go down here, hit another switch, zoom, 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 and I'm not going to get into a butt that must situation. You need to do that in order to uh, get through this part. And now we'll just loop back around to the next screen. I like how they handle the backtracking in the Dimensional Vortex, especially compared to the Lost Sanctum. It's not like... Like, uh, 
like you're going all the way up the mountain and then all the way down then all the way up and then all the way down you know here they kind of do the, this thing where they circle you around a little bit so they use the same map without actually going directly back and then directly forward again and plus it doesn't last very long either so that works out pretty well so yeah this uh, Dimensional Vortex, much better than the Lost Sanctum. Thank goodness. But anyway, after killing all those losers, we made it to the end! Okay, this is your last chance, viewers. Chrono Cross spoilers coming up. Okay, let's move on then. So, yeah, heal up there. And, let's see, I need to rearrange my equipment just a little bit. So let's bring Robo into the fold. Let's see, got those. Well, I need the prism specs, so let's give those to you. Or spectacles. I'm just going to call them the specs. But anyway, let's see, I need to give you a haste helm. But I don't think I need to worry about, like, status protection here. So I'll just stick with the moonbeam armor there. And let's see, you want to have the alluring cap, because there's some stuff I want to... Charm here, and that should be good. There's another exit, if you need that. Who's there? Johnny, is that you? Oh, hey, it's Dalton. How's it going, man? Haven't seen you in a while. I thought you got sucked into the... Oh, yeah, it was that void vortex thing. Huh. So that's what happened to him after we killed him. Or, well, we didn't kill him, but... You know what I mean. And not for long. If it weren't for me, you would be dead in the Ocean Palace when Lavos destroyed everything. Well, how about I give you a taste of our suffering? For boss time! Against Dalton, or once King Dalton himself. So, first things first, we want to use uh, Beast Toss and Frenzy against him. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, the thing here is... Well, actually, there really isn't much of a trick to this fight. But I like how they uh, bring in Dalton in this area to explain what happened to him after our fight with him, as opposed to just letting him get sucked in there and that's it. I don't know what Second Wind does. It doesn't change his uh, stats, I don't think. Or maybe it does. Maybe it healed him a little bit? Or, I don't know. What is this, Breath of Fire? No. No, only one boss here has Second Wind. I think it is over, Dalton. Whee! Sour grapes? I'm gonna grape you in the mouth! No. No, that's something else. But anyway, alright, we got him. What do you mean by that? Okay, why are you warning us? I mean, I guess, thanks for the warning, but... Anyway, that, that this is designed to tie in Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's ever stated in the original Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross, but at least from what I heard, like from some interviews and outside sources with the guys who wrote the story or whatever, they say that uh, Dalton uh, helped Poor raise that army and... Invaded Guardia, which is why Poor is a military power in Chrono Cross, and why Guardia isn't doing shit then. So. So, I like how they do that with uh, the post-game content in here to try and tie it into the next game there. So, it's not like the Lost Sanctum, where the story is, eh, not really that interesting. And there's a lot of backtracking and all that stuff, but here, you get some more... So you get some tie-in to the next game, and some really good equipment, no backtracking. 
So, just wait till you see the final boss of the post game. I really like it. So anyway, here, we want to charm this guy. Uh, what is he? Steel sh Shade, I think his name is? But anyway, yeah, you charm him, you can get another pair of prison specs. Alright. Uh, someone was asking, H.C. Bailey, what can you charm from the Alabaster Shade in the last dungeon? Well, you would... You could get a ha another Haste Helm if you really cared, but... I already got three, plus the Angel's TRS on. It's like, why would I need more? So I figured, eh, don't worry about it. Here, though, you can never have enough prison specs, so that's pretty nice. Oh, I, uh, something I forgot to mention. Uh, just like the uh, last dungeon, in this one, you have to bring Chrono along instead of Marley. So if he's not in your party, the game, as you saw, will force him into your party. So, not a whole lot you can do about that. But he is pretty good with Frenzy there. Unfortunately, Chrono doesn't really have many good dual techs. I'm trying to think of any dual techs he has that I actually like. I mean, Falcon Hit was good in certain situations. I, don't, I mean, X-Strike is kind of cool, I guess. Let me see what we got here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would never use any of his elemental swords at this point in the game. Nothing good with Robo. I'm just looking at my list here. Nothing really good with Frog or Ayla. Yeah, Chrono's dual attacks suck. I mean, there are times when they're useful, but they are seldom. Well, I suppose I used, uh, or I could have used Ice Sword 2 or Fire Sword 2 against uh, Magus there. Or, well, not Ice Sword 2, I'd have to use the one with Frog. Uh, sword Stream, that's it. So, you could do that, but, eh. So yeah, this boss, pretty much the same strategy as one's King Dalton. Just Beast Toss, Frenzy, that's pretty much all you need to do. You could use the Suzaku with the Dragon's Tear to get just about the same amount of damage, but the crit rate isn't that good. I mean, it's nice, but it's not, like, guaranteed, whereas Frenzy is guaranteed. And for the boss fights, that's what I really want. For a random battle, if I don't crit, not the end of the world there. Man, I love Beast Toss. One of my favorite dual techs in the game. Drop Kick's real nice, too. At least it gave Frog something useful to do. How are you walking through that? Oh yeah, you're like a shade or a spirit or something like that. But anyway, we get a stat boost. Hooray! Unfortunately, Chrono only gets plus one speed from that one, which is why I gave him more of the speed capsules earlier. So, But now his speed is max, so we're all set and ready to go. But can we make our way through the final leg of the Dimensional Vortex in the future? Find out next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger! This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!